Pleased to be joined once again on Halton News by infectious disease specialist, Dr. Dale Kalina. And Dr. Dale, we're not talking COVID this time. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, though. Uh, you know what? I think it sheds light on the fact that I do more than just COVID. But it's good to see you again. <laughs> good to see you as well. Well, listen, just when many had calmed down over COVID, um, about a week ago, the World Health Organization declared a global emergency over monkeypox. Should I be pressing the panic button? Absolutely not. Uh, no, you, you shouldn't be pressing the panic button. Uh, monkeypox is a very different virus than COVID, um, which which I think we can chat about a little bit. And uh, I don't think it's reason for panic, but I do think it's reason for healthcare workers around this country uh, and really around the world to think about it more frequently and to be checking for it and treating people with it. The global emergency moniker, this has also been something that was given to Zika virus and Ebola. Um, and now that, I mean, that's 2016 and 2014. Those two things are scarcely heard of in what, at least Western society now. So that I would guess is a bit of a positive when considering monkeypox. Yeah, in a way you're right because both Zika virus and Ebola virus are still, are still infecting people and they're still causing uh, disease in people. Um, particularly in the areas that they're endemic for Zika predominantly in South America and in the Caribbean and with uh, Ebola in uh, mostly Central Africa. Mm. But I think that it actually shed light on the fact that all of these viruses, including monkeypox, are, are what we would call diseases of neglect and, and orphan diseases where there's not a lot of research before they cause worldwide outbreaks, uh, which is something that, of course, we're seeing right now with monkeypox. So let's go right from the basics. You know, what is monkeypox? Since it has pox in it, I mean, I and most people probably immediately think chicken pox, smallpox, bumpy and itchy. Is there a relation? So there's a relationship between monkeypox and smallpox, but not really monkeypox and chicken pox, interestingly. So the pox itself is the rash that you get. Uh, but monkeypox is very similar to, uh, to smallpox, which of course none of us have ever seen because we eradicated it from the world uh, in the 1970s. Well, with that said then, you know, we hear pox and you mentioned smallpox. So does that mean a vaccine for smallpox would be applicable to monkeypox? Uh, yeah, and that's exactly it. So oh. monkeypox is vaccinated with, or, or for, I should say, by using the smallpox vaccine. So that's what you would have heard about in terms of vaccine rollout here in Canada and around the world. Um, it's a vaccine that we've had developed for decades, and, and it's a little bit different than the vaccine uh, that your, your aunts and uncles uh, and parents may have got, for instance, because that vaccine that we all kind of remember from there uh, from the 1960s and 70s gave you a little bit of a scar on your shoulder, and that's not quite the one that we're giving nowadays. But it does speak to the fact that smallpox and monkeypox are similar diseases. Monkeypox is kind of like a less severe version of smallpox. It causes the, the lesions around the body. Mm -hmm. It causes fevers. Um, it can cause severe disease as well, but it's far, far, far less likely to kill people as opposed to smallpox. And in fact, in this outbreak right now, outside of endemic countries, I think there have only been four reported deaths, even with the 17,000 or so cases that we've seen worldwide. So as people read articles about monkeypox um, on the internet, which means, of course, everything is true, um, headlines will read, this is a virus that is spreading rapidly within the gay community, predominantly male. Is there truth to this? So it is spreading amongst the community of men or sex men, but it's not a traditional sexually transmitted infection. It's not transmitted by vaginal fluids, sexual fluids like semen, things like that. It's spread by close contact. So the mm -hmm. easiest way that the, that the monkeypox virus actually spreads is by prolonged close contact. And where do you get prolonged close contact? Sex. And the fact of the matter is it got into the men who have sex with men community, so mostly gay and bisexual men, because they tend to have sex with other men who have sex with men. That's just how that works. But in a similar way to HIV, uh, which of course has been uh, a pandemic for several decades now, it also uh, was seen predominantly in the gay male community in the 1980s. 
um, in part because that's where it got into. And we see the same sort of thing with HIV across Canada right now, uh, where uh, individuals, particularly in uh, the Prairie Provinces and in Saskatchewan, if HIV gets into a smaller community, it tends to run rampant. Um, and that's not because uh, of any specific demographic of people, but it's because of the fact that viruses transmit. So the things that you can do to keep yourself safe from monkeypox is, yeah, talk to your partners uh, beforehand, ensure that nobody has lesions, uh, ensure that nobody has been exposed, and also be vaccinated. So you can call 311 Public Health and uh, set yourself up for a vaccine, particularly if you fall into one of the high-risk categories, um, with all that information being available on your local public health website. Dr. Kalina, always appreciate chatting with you. Thanks so much for taking time out. Pleasure to see you. 